Coming up, he's a lean, mean fighting machine. Man's got to know his limitations. Encore gives you an in-depth look at Clint Eastwood's character, Dirty Harry, the original, next on Encore. you're thinking did he fire six shots or only five well to tell you the truth in all this excitement i have kind of lost track myself but ian this is a 44 magnum the most powerful handgun in the world and would blow your head clean off you've got to ask yourself one question do i feel lucky well do you punk We're not just gonna let you walk out of here. Who is we, sucker? Smith, Wesson, and me. Go ahead. Make my day. Call me Dirty Harry. Every dirty job that comes along. He's the archetype of the modern movie cop. He plays by the rules until the rules don't work anymore. And then he plays by his own. One man, one gun. There's not an action hero working in the movies today who isn't in some way a version of that man who walked into our cinematic world in the fall of 1971. Inspector Harry Callahan. Dirty Harry. And this is a city, San Francisco, California. As much a character in these films as Monument Valley was in a John Ford Western. The city by the bay was portrayed as irresistible to society's underbelly. Bank robbers, terrorists, psychopaths, all on a day's work for Inspector Callahan. I was born in San Francisco and raised in the Bay Area most of my life, so I've always had an affinity for this particular area, especially for locations. However, uh, I've, I must confess that uh, Don Siegel and I were on our way to uh, Seattle to look at th that as a place for, uh, for Dirty Harry because it hadn't been photographed too much at that particular time. And uh, San Francisco had had a lot of films in the uh, 60s and, and early 70s, but we came through here and took a look around, and um, it was hard to go past San Francisco. And the idea was that Dirty Harry was supposed to be an outsider, that he was supposed to be a loner, you know, that didn't really have any relationships with women other than hookers or something like that. He lived alone. He had lousy food in his icebox, a couple of beers, you know. He had no life except the hunt. And that was enough, because he was a hunter. That's why he carried a 44 Magnum, because it was a gun that was developed for hunting. And I remember in the first draft of the script, he says, you really want to go hunting, get your badge. Oh! I think that Dirty Harry was a very violent movie but it was a cool character. And I think the reason why people admired the character so much was because he was not operating within a framework of the law, as so to speak, but he was stepping kind of out and taking things a little bit into his own hands. And I think that's what people admire a lot of times. They like to see movies and idolize people that can do that because they themselves, people in general in America and worldwide, feel powerless. So they all of a sudden they see a guy that all of a sudden takes the blow in his own hands and takes care of the job in a very cool way. Not in a traditional way, you know, hold up your arms, you are under arrest. No, he was eating a hamburger. 
He was eating a hamburger. He just happened to uh, get a glimpse of some crime that is being committed out there. But he was like, not like making a call and get the authority and getting another police car and all this. No, he just went out there eating his hamburger and blasting the criminal away. In the 70s, uh, Dirty Harry tapped in on a lot of feelings because at that time there wasn't, wasn't much thought of the victims of violent crime. It was mostly, uh, most of the news media and everything was obsessed with the, with the rights of the accused, as they should be. But uh, there was also an underlying thing within society out there in general that felt that maybe uh, there was so much accent put on the uh, rights of the accused that they weren't taking care of the rights of the victim. Well, what's interesting in the Dirty Harry dilemma, the Dirty Harry goes beyond the law to solve, is that we know right from wrong. So we're not talking, I mean, it's like somebody once said the, that lawyers do not practice justice, they practice law. You're lucky I'm not indicting you for assault with intent to commit murder. What? Where the hell does it say you've got a right to kick down doors, torture suspects, deny medical attention and legal counsel? Where have you been? Does Escobedo ring a bell? Miranda? I mean, you must have heard of the Fourth Amendment. <laughs> what I'm saying is that man had rights. Well, I'm all broken up about that man's rights. Whereas Dirty Harry is practicing justice. Are you trying to tell me that ballistics can't match the bullet up to this rifle? It does not matter what ballistics can do. This rifle might make a nice souvenir, but it's inadmissible as evidence. And who says that? It's the law. Well, then the law is crazy. I suppose I could pseudo-intellectualize and dig up some real <clears throat> deep meaning behind everything we did, but the depth wasn't beyond the, the man's frustration, and there was some frustration with legal decisions that would let a person off and let back out on the street, uh, even though he was considered extremely dangerous. Clint Eastwood was already an established film star in 1971. Still, Dirty Harry was a career shift for him. He was moving from the Western to the purely urban cop. We have warrants for a search of the premises. Serve him! There's a wonderful sense in the movie of potency because movies had already digressed to where a lot of shots were fired. You know, people shot machine guns at each other, or automatic pistols. Today, it takes a lot of shots to put a bad guy down. You know? What was nice about the 44 Magnum was it was one shot, and, and that was all that was necessary. Well, there was a lot of violence in the film, uh, but not, not violence by the, the standards they're using today. You know who I am? I'll still have to see your license and registration, sir. I believe you were speeding coming across the bridge. There was some feeling at that time that there was some great political statement in Dirty Harry. And uh, that, that just was kind of nonsense. I got those warrants for a search of the premises, Callahan, not for you to become judge, jury, and executioner. It was supposed to be a simple arrest. Well, arresting a killer like Palancio isn't always simple. People are guilty until proof. I mean, God damn it, you know what I mean. This city is on the edge of the worst criminal violence in its history, and you have to start full-scale military operations. I didn't start shooting at anyone who didn't start shooting at me first. We were just trying to make a good detective story. We didn't care too much about all that other stuff. These weren't fairy tales. They were depictions of gritty, ugly reality. Politically incorrect or not, there's a class of criminal that's not to be reasoned with. These criminals have no rules. 
no boundaries. And the only way to deal with them was on those terms. Harry Callahan understood that. And so did the movie going public. In truth, Harry spoke to a rising anger out there, and he didn't use a lot of words. He let his 44 Magnum do his talking for him and for us.